to bin or not to bin? That is the question, which we're hopefully going to answer throughout the course of today's video, if you'll forgive me that bit of Shakespearean deafness. I'm hopefully going to waste none of your time whatsoever, so we're going to jump straight into this video right now. I'll just very briefly outlay what we're going to be looking at today. So I've got four separate comparisons for you, two in one shot color, two in monochrome. In each case, you're looking at one hour of data making up each of these images. Now, in all of the comparisons, once again, you're going to be looking at a bin one image on the left, a bin two image in the middle, and a bin one resampled to 50% image to match that bin two data over on the right. No calibration frames are used on any of these images just to keep everything as equal as possible, but that doesn't count just for the 183 data in which I had to use darks for that camera as it's got severe amp glow and needs them. I'll be giving you the sampling ratios of each of these images also, so straight away we're looking at RASA data taken with the Poseidon C Pro, the Player One AMX571 camera. So the bin one data on the left, 1.94 axings per pixel. Bin 2 data in the middle, and this goes for the resampled data as well. This is 3.88 arc seconds per pixel. Now, let's start zooming in and taking a look around this image. So, at a one to one view, real quick, if we just take a look at the actual Cygnus wall itself, I'll copy this view. Whoops, across if I can. You can see, hopefully, at least I can see, that the bin 1 data by far looks the best. It's far sharper, even though the bin 2 data has more signal, uh, there's not enough to offset that loss in sharpness. Number one spot, bin 1 data. Number two is going to be resampled for me, I would say. It's clearly better than the native bin 2 data, if we just try and evidence this for you slightly by looking at this little tight group of stars right here. Just copy this view across. You can see it's done a better job of practically um, showing you them being separated over on the resample image it's of course best on the bin one image but also some extra data uh, has been effectively just blurred into the background and lost in bin two so this little bump right here hopefully you can see that on the screen it's gone effectively on that bin two data but on the resampled image just here it's still present so resampling seems to be better than binning at least in terms of one shot color. Now I'm well aware that nobody leaves the data in this state. This is just an STF uh, and nobody does that. You know, you're gonna process it further. So I went ahead and did that for all of these images too. So we're gonna take a look first with blur exterminator applied to each of these images. So this is just a step now of blur exterminator. If you wanna buy this software, by the way, any of the RC Astro software, I've got affiliate links down in the description box below which costs you no extra to use and really do help out my channel that said um it looks like bin 2 data does get a lot of help from blur exterminator but also as does bin 1 and it affects the resampled data largely like the bin 2 data so nothing special is happening there I have to say even though bin 2 should technically be the least noisy of these comparisons in all of these comparisons actually it actually doesn't look it to me. My eye is more drawn to that large model rather than the actual fine noise. So at least, rather than mathematically speaking, just human speaking, I think um, bin one data looks the best. Now, I've gone one more step right here. I've just gone ahead and applied uh, noise exterminator right now. So these are the settings which are used, 0 0.60 on denoise, left detail, at defaults this is the same for every single image by the way i'll just show you these tools right now this is how i used blur exterminator for them all so i wasn't making a custom psf or anything like that I was just allowing it to calculate its own and the resamples were all done using the automatic interpolation algorithm and a 50 percent a uh, applied so now that everything has been blur exterminated and noise exterminated as well so it's taken into a slightly more processed state once again, clearly, bin one data wins. Uh, I mean, these little groups of stars and things like that, they just look a lot better, I would say. There's no two ways about it. Uh, stars are looking cleaner. Detail looks cleaner. If I just jump back down towards maybe the top of the Cygnus wall right there, and then we'll end this comparison, this particular one. Hopefully you guys can see. I know I'm using a lot of zoom, but I'm going to have to throughout the course of this video just so that you guys can get the best chance of seeing what I'm seeing through YouTube's compression. So um, 
once again detail a clear win for bin one so when you sampled quite closely you definitely shouldn't be binning uh, that's should be probably no news to anybody now we're going to take a look at some more one shot color data but this time sampled much more finely so this is taken with the ascar 130 phq again bin one on the left bin two in the middle resampled bin one data over on the right but the sampling ratios for this so bin one on the left here is half an arc second per pixel so that is very much oversampled traditionally speaking whereas of course we're at one arc second per pixel on the right to images now if we zoom in and start to take a, an actual look at the horse's head so if we just maybe go to two to one zoom something like that hopefully you can see uh, it looks like the noise quality of the bin one image is kind of as i was saying it looks that little bit more satisfying to my eye but also what we're seeing is even at half an arc second per pixel where we should traditionally be oversampled i'm actually seeing these stars these very small stars looking a lot more visually pleasing and i mean not even close comparing these small stars right here to the bin 2 image where the bin 2 image has actually lost the very smallest of those stars i hope that's coming across for you but resampling interestingly has retained it also i think it's worth saying that the resampled data the noise quality looks better than native bin 2 that could be a factor to consider if you're thinking about uh, making your one shot color captures this way but if we just take a look at some more regions of the image, so down here on the flame nebula perhaps, um, maybe around that base there. We'll just copy those views across. Once again, we are seeing maybe more contrast on the bin 2 image, but the bin 1 and then the resampled are my two favorites, uh, going in order of bin 1 in first place, resampled in second, and coming in third place, that bin 2 data now. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and undo these tools. So noise exterminator undo. As you can see, bin 2 really looks quite mottled at that. And I'm going to undo blur exterminator 2 on all three of them. It's really not getting any, any better. I, I think this scope has more to give than... Um, than bin 2 will allow even at this kind of fine sampling ratio so once again you can see those small stars if we just reapply blur exterminator noise exterminator blur exterminator noise exterminator again on all three at least to my eye hopefully you guys can see what i'm talking about the smaller stars and things like that not that you're ever going to be zooming in quite this much but it's nice to have all the data you that you aim to capture being captured rather than some of it being lost. I, uh, I definitely think, for me, bin one, even when massively oversampled and using a one-shot color camera, that's the way to go. Now we're gonna start taking a look at the monochrome comparisons. So this is the Sol Nebula taken with the Esprit 120 with the 0.77 times reducer, actually running a, a plate solved 646 millimeters of focal length with the 183 camera, as I said. So, giving us three different, uh, well, two different sampling ratios, 0.77 arc seconds per pixel over here on bin one on the left, 1.54 arc seconds per pixel in the middle and on the right, that's, that's bin two and resampled 50%. Let's zoom in a little bit. We'll undo any processing that's been done and we'll reapply them in just a moment. So let's get to a satisfying part of the image to take a look at think this will do a good job of giving us a chance of seeing what's going on so i'll copy that view across right away i'm seeing that salt and pepper noise is more noticeable at bin 2 but there is more signal in the bin 2 image all these stretches were performed by the way just with sdf so uh, everything should be as as equal as it possibly can be and uh, representative of the underlying data with no bias towards one image all the other now I'm going to say I can see more detail on the bin one image, certainly, uh, especially across this tip region right here. If I just uh, raise this up, I realize my head is blocking the view for some parts of this image. That's visible now, especially this little hook. So this kind of little hook region right here 
it looks like there's more detail in bin 1. Bin 2 definitely got a little bit more signal, but you can always take more shots. So we're going to go ahead now and apply blur, blur exterminator and noise exterminator to all three. And this is where, for me, the gap starts to widen. Um, clearly, bin 1 is the winner now. Just looking at this, you know, I've got the live view, no compression at all. So I can just tell you as I see it. And bin one just definitely looks better. Um, this is just a two to one view. And, you know, to make the bin two match that, it's having to do four to one. But by now, stars are starting to appear kind of squared off and it's not looking good. Detail along the edge that's been brought back from deconvolution using blur exterminator. Razor sharp along this edge compared to the bin two, which looks good. Don't get me wrong. And if you weren't comparing these side by side, you'd probably think this looks phenomenal. But we are comparing them side by side for the sake of making an actual valid comparison. Uh, and I have to say, it looks like I'm going to give up shooting in bin 2 with this thing. We'll have to take a look at that last set of data. Also, in order to try and draw a final conclusion, but... Yeah, just kind of scanning around this right now. Once again, the noise quality after noise reduction is applied. The clear winner is bin one and the detail that's visible uh especially viewing like this so yes it is zoomed in but you know why do we spend all these hours trying to take these shots if we're not going to actually you know pan around and have a good close look at them at least that's what i like to do and uh, bin one is giving me the most satisfying way of doing that bin two is not bad though i have to say so for this comparison Unfortunately, it's the same thing once again. So, bin 2, I'm thinking, is out of the window for me. Uh, it looks like bin 1 is the way to go. And here's the final comparison that I made. So, this is the Cygnus wall over here. Um, and if we just zoom in once again. So, let's take a look right down at the bottom of the wall here, if we can. And just zoom in around this region here. This should be a good little spot to compare. Copy these views across. Now, immediately, I can tell you once again that noise quality is standing out. So I'm going to undo all three of these and take a look at them natively. So this is just no blur exterminator, no noise exterminator, just an SDF uh, stretch applied to all three of these. This isn't as bad, I'd say, as the last one. So maybe object elevation had something to do with the detail lost in the last comparison. But still, even even so, uh, bin one contains more detail on this target. So even with what would traditionally be oversampling, we are still seeing benefits from shooting like that. I'll just go up a little bit. Let's take a look now at this kind of central region. In fact, no, I've changed my mind. We'll take a look right at the top. So here, this looks like a decent spot to check out. Okay, we've got the views copied across. And yeah, uh, there is more signal in that bin too, but let's start playing this blur exterminator, noise exterminator, blur exterminator, noise exterminator. So everything's in a very basic state of processing now. And once again, I'm seeing these finer stars, especially the very small ones in the image, just look so much more satisfying to the eye compared to the bin 2 data. And indeed, some of the smaller stars are being lost in the bin 2 data. So if I zoom in this region, I know we're getting to really silly levels of zoom right now, but just for the sake of trying to show you what I'm talking about, some of the stars that persist in the bin 1 data seemingly like this just starting to come through is gone in that bin 2 data. There's a few more around that's like that. So um, we'll go now to a slightly more reasonable level of zoom. So Whoops, this is one to one. Copy that across, take another look. The difference is less obvious at a one to one zoom, but it's still plain to see. Uh, I imagine at this level of zoom, it's going to be very hard to pick a difference between the three once YouTube compression has had its way with these images. But still, if you can just take my word for it, I'm looking here <laughs> right now live. Then, yeah, I can tell you clearly that. Bin one has more data, and uh, you know, for all its its troubles, looking after that amount of 
data, transferring it around at the end of the night and stacking up huge amounts if you take a few hundred frames yeah it's a bit of a pain in the backside but is it worth it yeah i think so so <laughs> that's about it guys i know this has been a quite kind of a basic comparison for you but i wanted to try and wrap this up as fast as i possibly could and it's already gone on 15 minutes so thank you very much for your patience i uh, i hope that you found this useful at all if you have please do leave a like if you like any of the RC software, uh, RC Astro software, so that's Star Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, I do have affiliate links down below. And again, like I say, if you choose to use them, it'll cost you nothing more, but it will indeed help me and my channel out a great deal. So uh, thank you very much if you use those. That's about it from me, guys, I think. So uh, as always, thanks to all of you for watching. Huge thanks to all my uh, YouTube channel members, Patreon supporters, I, uh, I appreciate all of you guys, so uh, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you in the next one. Very sorry for the extremely basic kind of portrayal of this video. So, uh, till next time, close guys.